Welcome, everybody. Uh, hopefully, you had a great uh, coffee break, and you are all energized uh, to listen to us uh, over here. So uh, today, uh, with my, uh, I'm Ekta Sachan. I'm a senior engineering manager with Amazon Key Spaces. Today, with my colleague Himanshu over here, we're going to talk about how you can leverage uh, uh, Apache Cassandra to be building highly scalable and efficient AI-based application. We'll be going over, I'll be doing some baselining, what's machine learning. I'm sure you're all very well aware of it, but just take two minutes uh, to go over that. Why Apache Cassandra is a great uh, backend system. Uh, and uh, you know we have chosen some technologies. One of them is Amazon SageMaker to set up a demo. And the fun part of the talk is going to be with uh, Himanshu over here, who will be going over the two use cases and showing some live demos as we speak. Um, so what's machine learning? Some of us, uh, you know, it's really good uh, as humans, some things come very naturally to us. You can look at certain data sets, you can make uh, some observations, you can make some decision. Teaching that to machine is machine learning. Uh, usually in machine learning, uh, you have uh, two techniques that is generally uh, applied, supervised and unsupervised. In supervised, uh, you have known input data sets. Uh, and a known output data sets, and you, uh, you, know, you do uh, uh, train your uh, algorithm based on that to predict um, you know, what the outcome of it is. Within supervised, you have uh, two techniques, uh, that is uh, classification uh, and, and regression. In classifications, usually you, have, you, you, know, you label the data and you could uh, actually uh, you know, uh, put it in, in a uh, normal and an abnormal category and help uh, define, uh, help teach the algorithm what is within the right uh, pattern. You can use the classification technique uh, in, to predict the outcome of an event uh, or an, uh, what could happen in the future. So general use cases for those things would be like, hey, is this an email coming from a genuine uh, you know, place? Or is this a spam? Or uh, you know, your bank could use your data sets, or you know, you're doing uh, some transactions with the bank, you have a mortgage, you have a credit history with them. Yeah. You know, they could use uh, that data set to predict when a customer could do, go on the default. That's where supervised comes in. Uh, there is a similar thing in regression, which is also supervised. But there, you're looking at continuous set of data sets to come and, and teach your algorithm to say, hey, when it's different, how, how these things uh, connect with each other and you know, use that algorithm to predict certain things. So uh, the, a general use case could be about you know, uh, look at um, house prices. Hey, the lot size, the dimension of the house, the, the, you know, how those are associated, the neighborhood, the, the number of bedrooms and the bathrooms that could be, how that is associated with uh, the price and you know, predicting your pricing model uh, for the house uh, is where regression data sets uh, could be used. Now coming to unsupervised side of the technique, where uh, you, know, you don't know, you do not uh, label the data set. Uh, it's all about you know, uh, the algorithm is looking at what is a common cluster. So that means you actually cluster the data set based on uh, similarities of the object and, uh, and, and what's different between those objects. Uh, some of the places where you could uh, look at uh, applying this uh, thinking would be, you know, uh, identifying uh, where, uh, uh, what kind of customers actually did purchases for a similar kind of product, a very powerful way. There is another technique that uh, commonly gets uh, used, used in machine learning as well that is semi-supervised, where you can apply your uh, uh, unsupervised techniques on the, uh, on the uh, structure, uh, on the known data set, and you can have a better predictive uh, algorithm uh, on part of that data set. Now we would think, where could we be using uh, some of these uh, you know, machine learning? One of the common areas or common uh, problem sets that we could is anomaly detection. Now what's anomaly detection? Well, you know, as human, I'm like, we can look around and we can say, hey, um, well, I'm not brightly colored uh, pink shirt uh, uh, wearing a person, but if I, oh, that person looks different because they're wearing a different color, I, we could stand out. But you know, that is a data set, uh, you know, you got, or you could teach your uh, algorithm. So some of the places where we could use this is fraud detection, uh, health monitoring, you know, uh, what's a normal looking, uh, you know, uh, a uh, image or, uh, or uh, 
what's not. It also can help you find opportunities, like uh, you, know, you are in a certain market segment, um, and uh, an anomaly could be that, hey, we have not uh, penetrated in this market. This is a use case that you could be actually looking at building it, marketing it. So it's a very powerful tool that could be utilized in many various uh, places, uh, uh, aspects of it. Uh, so now I'll come back to uh, come to say why Apache Cassandra. Uh, we are at the, almost at the end of the second day. I'm sure we all can agree uh, that there are some great benefits Apache Cassandra uh, provides as a NoSQL database. Uh, you know, it's a highly scalable system. You can horizontally scale by adding multiple data centers. You could add uh, multiple nodes and scale vertically. That means it can actually provide you very high throughput uh, read and write. That means you could be sending in your IoT data, your log services data, a lot of data munching that you would want to do on some of these data sets. Uh, it's uh, inherent uh, architecture which provides fault tolerance uh, and the replication actually helps us you know, give confidence that you're not going to lose any of your data. So you could be storing your mission critical data over there and do any kind of analysis on that. Along with all the high throughput, it actually offers high performance with that high throughput. And that makes it really optimal to be using in big data, large data set, to be using on the OLTP side of it, online transaction processing, where you, know, you define your schema uh, uh, really well. You can answer your questions really in real time. Or in conjunction with products like Spar uh, Apache Spark, Apache Kafka, you know, Cassandra data set could be really looked at at uh, you know answering questions for where you have multi-dimensional data sets uh, for online uh, analytical processing. Uh, so you know, uh, I'm uh, that's what I would say that that's it's inherently really uh, uh, great. Other benefit of Apache Cassandra, it's not bound to any single product, uh, any single cloud. So you could be in a multi-cloud uh, strategy, you could be in a hybrid, you could be uh, you know, in your own single data center and you could be looking at that, it's, it's really great. Now, um, I will quickly talk about uh, certain uh, product choices that we have used uh, in our demo just to uh, help uh, you know, uh, showcase a product. We've used um, uh, 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 Amazon Kinesis instead of Ka uh, Kafka to help you know, for the ease of setup, as well as Amazon Key Spaces. Um, Amazon Key Spaces uh, is uh, for Apache Cassandra. It's a managed uh, service which provides a similar kind of scale. Um, you know, uh, it's a compatible Cassandra, so you could be using uh, your SQL queries uh, as similarly as you are using uh, in Cassandra, the same drivers, as long as it is uh, 2.20 uh, licensed. Um, and, uh, you know, you just don't have to manage your service. Uh, it's pretty much uh, that. Uh, with that, uh, uh, you know, we also have chosen to use uh, Amazon SageMaker. Uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, uh, great uh, service that uh, is uh, the ease of being able to actually choose your data set. Uh, pick and choose your model. It has all those models in there. So if you are just trying to figure out which model is best suited, you could use some of them, um, you know, uh, in there to uh, figure it out, train it, publish it, deploy it. Um, it, it, it just works. One of the great things that I think that was very recently uh, added uh, to the toolkit was model monitoring. While uh, you know uh, it's really great to be able to uh, set up the model, train your uh, uh, things on it, and get the right prediction over the period of time, that can change. You don't you know uh, certain attributes change. You're not getting that data. Some biases come in into the data set. So being able to figure out, hey, how well your prediction is and being able to adapt to it is very critical as you are working through a long time. So uh, having that um, monitoring is really key uh, you know, to make sure that in long term, these things are working well. With that, I know I have given uh, almost uh, a lot of talk over here. Let's get some action. Himanshu, all yours. Yeah, thank you so much, Ekta. Uh, hey, folks, uh, I'm Himanshu Jindal. Um, so let's, yeah, let's go into the demos. Um, so I'll try to do something very brave. I'll show two demos in real time. As we speak, I'll run those commands. Hopefully everything goes well. Uh, the two demos that we have are, the first is we're going to actually run a recommendation engine using SageMaker. Um, so I'll show you how you can actually train your data, read from key spaces, and actually uh, create segments uh, and, and then store them back in key spaces. 
Uh, we'll also do a real-time fraud detection exercise. So we'll actually pump data into Kinesis. Uh, we'll see our machine learning algorithm predict uh, based on the training that we have provided it. Um, and we'll insert that data into key spaces. And we'll see all of that happen in real time. So yeah, so let's uh, go straight into it. Um, so the very first demo, it's about a recommendation system, right? So we have a use case where we are a retail company uh, and we are putting transaction into, in, transactions into key spaces, right? Uh, so it's a very common use case where uh, if, a, if you're a retail company, you want to figure out, okay, you know, who do I send my ads to? Um, your ads for customers who are very new are likely going to be different from customers who have been using your products for a long time. Um, and very different from customers who haven't used your product in a long time, right? So they haven't come to your store. Maybe they were using it before. Um, so we are going to be using a, a technique called customer segmenting. Uh, and for this example, we use a very simple model uh, to segment our customers into just five segments so we can see uh, what kind of ads we can send them. Um, so we'll, we'll basically read the transactions from key spaces, uh, segment them, and then run them on, uh, store them in key spaces back. So, all right, so let's see how this comes together. Mirror the display. All right, we are live. So yeah, so we have this table here um, where, yeah, so we have this table here already created, which contains a lot of transactions for our customers. So let's just take a look at that table. Right, so it contains invoice, it contains stock code, country, you know, description, um, and we have about 20,000 know, uh, entries over here. So what we do with SageMaker is, um, I have a lab created already, um, and I have this command stored. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm loading this data into SageMaker, so if you see here, I'm establishing an SSL connection to key spaces. I'm selecting all the schema, I'm selecting the data from that schema. Um, and then um, I'm basically munging the data over here. Um, and you can see there's a lot of comments over here because you know, as you are building an algorithm, you want to remove all the nulls, you want to add data, you want to enrich that data. Um, and then I'm creating a recency frequency monetary score of it, uh, which is a base of how recent the customer has come to your store how frequently they're coming to the store, and how much money they are spending on your store. Um, and then I'm running k-means clustering on it, and then I'm storing data back to key spaces. So I'm going to change this run ID to something unique, let's say 121, um, and then run this algorithm. So it's running, yep, so it has segmented, and it, Takes a little bit of time to process that and put that into key spaces. Yep, so now we go to key spaces, right? Um, so we have this tables here. Yeah, so we have this ML clustering results table here, which we can query and see. And you can see there's, for run ID 121, there's five uh, segments created, and it's the number of customers here. So if we wanted, we could send them targeted emails or different emails that we wanted to, right? Um, so yeah, so that's, that's the first demo that we have. It's a, uh, it allows you to segment customers. But as you were seeing, let me just make sure we can see this. One second. Oh, died there. So we got it back. Yeah, so now that you saw how we can actually segment our data, now let's see how we can build something real time, right? So let's say we are a bank um, and we have these transactions coming in. And we want to see how do we detect fraudulent transactions in real time. So the number one piece that we need to build is we need to build a model that can give us real time results to tell us if a transaction is fraudulent or not. So we have used the service 
uh, Amazon fraud detector to train a model. So we took an annotated data in S3. Uh, it was about 200 megs in size. Uh, we trained the model in using Amazon fraud detector. It took about a few hours. But once we did that, we have an endpoint which we can call uh, with, the, with our data, and it will give us whether it's a, a fraud or not. Um, so now that we have that model, how do we actually use that to build a real-time system um, and build a workflow that we can just deploy and it is totally serverless and it's just uh, we don't have to worry about it at all? So the first thing that we'll do is we'll take our transactions and we'll put it into Kinesis. Uh, Kinesis is a managed serverless uh, streaming service, so you can put your data in um, and you can get it back uh, and you can put multiple processes on it. So here we're going to put a step function workflow on it. Uh, step function is another serverless offering. Uh, it allows us to do uh, orchestrate uh, serverless workflows um, on events that are coming in. So in this case, we have hooked a step function workflow onto our transaction data stream. And then what we'll do is we'll firstly we'll call, uh, we'll perform inference using the model that we just trained. Uh, and then we'll store those transactions in uh, key spaces and then we'll send those, uh, if the transaction is fraudulent, then we'll send a notification to SNS where we can take uh, actions like we can say, if the transaction is over $1,000, then send a text to someone or send a notification to a customer support person. Um, we'll also extend this use case to uh, replicate this data to another AWS region. So imagine you have a use case where you're storing these transactions, but you wanna provide 24 seven support to your customers. So you might want to replicate this to, uh, I've replicated to this to India, for, for example. So they can also access this data and act on it. So if there's a transaction that's fraudulent, they can see, they can call that person, they can maybe uh, fix those or put some notes in. So yeah, so that's a lot of services. And so let's see how they actually play around in a demo. Nice. Yeah, so let's see. So let's work from our building blocks, right? This is the fraud detector model that I have that I've already trained using fraud detector. So I have a detector here. Um, you can see it was created four days ago. Um, and here's the model. And it's trained. Um, and there's basically three rules. There's basically it assigns a score. And if it's above a certain number, we're like, okay, this is a fraudulent. If it's between certain numbers, we aren't sure. So we say we are unsure. And if it's less, then we're like, okay, we approve this transaction. Um, and for this example, what I'll do is I'll use Kinesis Data Generator, which if you haven't, I recommend this tool a lot. Um, it allows you to simulate, uh, to put in real looking data into Kinesis. So I will actually uh, show you how to create a template that puts transactions that look like real transactions. So, so all right, so you just select your region and you select your stream and you specify the rate here. And here's a template. So I'm saying, hey, you know, we've created a transaction ID with these um, with these ranges, timestamp a customer email. So I create like a record, and then I can like test my system and see how it works. Um, and here's the step machine, a state machine that I have. And I can even show you the definition of this. So we can see here that this state machine is first it's calling a fraud detector to get prediction on it, then it's calling a Lambda to store that transaction in key spaces, and then if it's a suspicious transaction, it's sending it to SNS, otherwise it's just ending the state. So you can see it's all just configuration, very easy to deploy. Um, and actually now, let's see how it actually looks like in action. Send data, so now it's sending data. And you can see um, I already have events coming in here. Um, and I have my key spaces table here where I can select my bank transaction. And you can see it's getting filled up. So, yeah, let's run this. Yeah, so this is in my US East One regions. All my resources are in US East One. 
And you can see here 311. This, these are the latest one because it is 311 right now. Um, so yeah, um, and we can see in our work, so it's running. And if I refresh, there will be many, many more uh, which have been executed. So yeah, as you can see, it's just running in real time and is detecting some of the transaction as um, blocked. Some of these need to be investigated. Some of these are approved. Yeah, so as you can see, it works in real time. Um, and what we'll also do is, uh, I'll also show how these are being replicated. So this is my bomb, Bombay region. So I didn't have to do anything. These are just being replicated to the Bombay region automatically in real time. Um, yeah, so it's all serverless. Um, yeah, and you know the machine learning algorithms that we've used are pretty simple. Um, you know, if you uh, if you are into machine learning, you can really make these more advanced, train these, and as Ekta said, you can then monitor your model and then improve on these models as well. All right, mirror stand. Okay, all right, we're back. All right, so yeah, these are the links for the uh, demos that I performed. Um, and yeah, you can even ask me any questions or anything that you have. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, these are contact information. Yeah, these were the talks that we did. Um, so thank you so much, folks. Uh, we'll take any questions that you have. Thank you, Himanshu, and thank you, everybody. Yeah. Right. So, uh, I have a question. Oh, yeah. Hi. So, um, our team currently actually uses Cassandra as our main data store, um, and uh, it's a part of a data pipeline. And right now, we don't have any machine learning components. But I think you know many teams are always kind of thinking of, oh, as the next step, how do we uh, integrate ML, right? Just like how how yeah. you guys do. Um, but the challenge I think comes in that Cassandra really uh, depends on how you design the data model, and that really can, uh, you know, I mean, it changes how the partitions are created, and then that affects read and write throughput and all of that, right? So when you created your products, did you have that like machine learning component in mind, as well as the client endpoint in mind, and did that kind of change how the data model or partition design? Occurred, or did you have to make any tweaks? I'm just kind of curious about your experience. Yeah, there. yeah. I think uh, I would say for prototyping, it's the schema is less important, right? Like your most important goal here is to show that uh, you can provide value to your business. So uh, one of the things that I'm doing is I took a subset of records, so 20,000 out of a big data set, and I ran clustering on it. Um, so I would say the first step should be to just see how you can get value out of that data. So you can show to your business that yes, you know, uh, by running this algorithm using these tools, we can get data out of it. Um, and then once you're going to scale, then I would look at okay, you know, for my um, for machine learning, I need this schema. But for my reads and writes, I need a different schema. So if there's a different schema, then you can think of creating a replica. Um, you can build the model like we did with uh, in my second example where there's a stream and you can put it into two places. Or you can also use Apache Spark to run a job every few hours to just take that data and put it in another place. Um, so you know, then I would look at the cost analysis and see how important it is. Um, and depending on how big your data is, it might schema might not be as big a problem. Uh, but if it's a big problem, then you can definitely consider one of those options. Uh, I will add, I'm like, you know, uh, Cassandra is a NoSQL database. So actually, you know, defining your schema, especially if you're going to look at real time. So everything that Himanshu added, if you're doing analytical processing, that means that you're munching that data after the fact. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could you could uh, read it um, with Spark or anything, or could you store it in a in a temporary setup, right? And uh, analyze the data based on that. But if you're trying to answer uh, more real time, you your schema really matters in your NoSQL uh, configuration. So yeah. uh, I would say, and storage is cheap. I'm like that's the whole thing, right? NoSQL. I'm like that's where we have gone to. So having a copy of that same data in multiple forms makes it more efficient, and that's the core behind it. Repeat what they said. That in in reality, you want to use key spaces because you already have existing data. I would not recommend you use key spaces if you try to do 
brand new project and you know that you're gonna use for just ML, for analytical processes. As I said, in this case, you take existing data from key spaces, create your data lake, create some other processes that, that will provide you. But if you wanna get data from existing schemas, yeah, and this is the best example. Uh, and again, one thing that you, just uh, from the cost perspective, you pay for each read. So for, for the ML process, sometimes you need to read the same data multiple times. And sometimes benefits, again, just build some process, extract the data, and we have multiple ways of extracting data, store it in the S3, store, store in your data lake, and use this as your primary, uh, primary one. Any other questions? If not, uh, thank you so much for coming. It has been a pleasure to uh, have this opportunity and yeah, share some of our learnings. Yeah, thank you so much, folks. <laughs>